Philadelphia, are you ready? <laughs> no, he said, are you ready? This is Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, your first stop for everything professional wrestling. So sit back and enjoy wrestling talk at its finest with your hosts, Larry Hall and Joe Corrado. Welcome, everybody, to Brotherly Love Wrestling and on our it's show worse. today. Yeah, it's hard to do this very twice. And, and, and look at the faces I got to look, look at. Today, we have the big bad booty daddies, Trey John Mirage. And uh, oh my God, I completely lost his name. <laughs> <laughs> I mixed no, Ron Voyage and Trey John Horn together. Oh, Either way, I got it out. Guys, welcome to the show. What is up, Camp Leap Frog Zone? We are Do. I am the DOTG. Now you have me slipping up my words. That is Ron Boyage. We are the big bad booty daddies. What it is? The international delight, the party starter, Ron Boyage. What's up, brother? We love wrestling and podcast world. How it is? What it is? Thank you. Thank you for bringing it back. Thank you for uh, saving the intro. Thanks. I'm sorry. I got to clean you guys up, man. This is ridiculous. I mean, it's, it's not like I did it right the first time. And then it didn't count. That's the best part. Yeah. And we don't even have a blooper reel to show anyone. So people just think we're fucking crazy. Oh, yeah, of course. Man. That's good. That's so, all right, we want to welcome you guys. We know that you've been wrestling for Camp Leapfrog. And we've been uh, a part of it. We helped sponsor their last show. And hopefully... Some shows down the road as well. Thank so, you for that. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah you're absolutely. welcome. It's the least we could do. We we saw the potential and how much fun everyone looked like they were having on those shows. And we're like, that's the kind of wrestling that we want to associate with. People that Ooh. are look like a family and they act as a family and they have they put on good wrestling shows. You can tell that everybody's invested who's putting on the shows and everybody is working towards the same goal and trying to think outside of the box. Yeah, I think so, yeah, dude, it's it's all it's 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 super fun and outside the box, man. Uh, Chris and Sam, and just pretty much everyone who contributes is just is on a whole nother level of stepping outside the box to uh, to do fun, creative things for everybody. It's it's dope, man. And uh, I actually met Trajan through Camp Leapfrog, and you know we linked yeah. up the, the yeah, yeah like the first day we were there, and they were just like, yo, you guys are gonna be a solid team together and you know he's a good dude so i'm cool with tag team with him yeah no definitely i definitely appreciate the platform that we get to be on especially on uh, iwtv um i've gotten the chance over the years from like the beginning of iwtv to now that I've gotten a chance to, like, work on that platform and uh i, I like I, I like the entertaining side of wrestling i think camp leapfrog kind of takes talented athletes like even me and myself like myself and ron and like uh it's not crazy serious you know what i mean it's not what you're gonna get at like um like a like a gcw and new japan and things like that there's a lot of like a goofy aspect which is needed in wrestling i think i like it a whole it's more of a chill show compared to like competitive wrestling event that like a lot of people are used to and i think that's always needed in the wrestling world so i mean i definitely enjoy it. it's definitely appreciative on both ends i think it's funny because you go into it if you're just tuning in blindly you see Cantley you're like what the hell could this possibly be but then when it ties into the wrestling aspect it's some of the most quality wrestling that's going on on the independence right now so I think that's that's oh, like your yeah. hook like your your you int your intrigue behind it of being a like set around a camp and then when you actually tune in and watch it you're like holy fuck this is actually a pretty cool wrestling show I think that uh I think that really breaks the ground there too. Like to piggyback off what I was saying is like, uh, it kind of shows people that you don't have to be, doesn't always have to be 1987 WWF. Like, you know what I mean? Like you could have fun characters and still, you know, kick ass in the ring. I mean, like there's a bunch of characters where like at first it's a ha ha. And then like in the ring, there's a, like, we are still all professional, like, you know, like talented, serious wrestlers. So like, you're going to get that live action in the ring, but like, I mean, every action movie has a ha-ha in it, so it's still the same kind of concept in that aspect of it. 
Larry Larry shirt right now is a tribute to the Midnight Wonder Boys, which was Mikowski and Travis. So, dude, that was hilarious. Yeah. When you think of those two, how they entered the ring and how you know their background, like Mikowski is a legit badass, and yeah, I wrestled him. It sucks. <laughs> Travis is a great. Yeah, yeah. Wrestler. So yeah, that motherfucker <laughs> threw me like ten feet in the air. <laughs> Yeah, he's known for that, huh? <laughs> yeah, dude, he's that, he's a lot stronger than he looks, bro. Because I'm I'm 250 all belly, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's all right here. That's a lot of a lot of, a lot of you got to move. So all he had to do is really center it to your belly, and it was it was probably cake from there. It could yeah, have been a sexy belly, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking real. <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was leaving. I, Yo, I no, no, but uh, those like Mikowski and, and Huckabee, bro, they are dope at wrestling. It's it's insane. Like, and I and I was like honored because you know I know you know I, like you said you know their background, you know what the fuck they've been through and what they've done, and so um, wrestling guys on caliber like that, I it's just it's a pleasure for me to be able to uh, to know that I can keep up with people like that and and have a good match wherever the fuck I go. So. It's it was awesome wrestling those two guys. They're good. Those guys are good, and they represent Camp Leapfrog very damn well. They're they're like overall everything. You know, you get the ha ha, you get the serious wrestling, you get the you know the entrance, the 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 story that they tell. Like those guys are solid wrestlers. They're really good. And it's good to have people like that because it helps elevate the rest of the roster. It helps to elevate everybody. So anybody who gets in the ring with someone that you you've seen elsewhere that's going to help elevate everybody. And it's, it's kind of a, a testament to what camp Le- camp leapfrog is all about. I mean, it's 100%. that whole, like they got, like they got that, um, like the tadpole matches and stuff like that, where it's like the, the rookies come in and, you know, they show out their shit and they work guys with experience and stuff like that. And it's actually really, it's really cool to see um, everyone get their shot that they, that, on the show like everyone has a chance to show out and and do their thing it's it's actually pretty amazing that um that chris and sam and everyone who runs the runs the thing was a high tension wrestling it's you know they're they're also a sponsor for them as well um it, it's cool to see that they allow everyone to be themselves and give them that platform and iwtv too for for putting it on there and and allowing us to do stuff like that is is pretty amazing i feel special no big deal. No big. No fucking big deal. When you feel good, you wrestle good. So that's the way. Yeah, you go. absolutely, absolutely. So, so now, go ahead, Larry. All right, I've I've been hogging the microphone. Go ahead. That's okay. That's okay. So, uh, guys, with wrestling now with Camp Leapfrog, with the other places you may have wrestled, how does the like locker room feeling and the way Leapfrog is compared to other locker rooms? Uh, a lot of those, like a lot of those guys, um, have like a lot of them are already tight with each other, like through Shakara, and then like I've luckily gotten through like True Wrestling and a few other companies. I've gotten close to like people like Devontes and things like that. So like, it's very it's very family based. I mean, the cool thing about Camp Leapfrog is it's like sometimes you go to a show and you know you're just going to a show, you know you're going to work. Uh, Leapfrog is very much like the cool aspect of it is, is a very hangout. Like when you go there, it feels like you're going there to hang out with friends. It doesn't feel like you're going there to wrestle. You know, it's, you're hanging out with friends in spandex until you find yourself in the ring. And then, you know, it's that go time. But it's, it's a very like, very. It, it feels like camp. Like the, the name of it really, I mean, really drives the point home to it. Because it's, I mean, it, you feel like you're at home. I mean, you get family and friends like Last show we worked, I think the one show we worked with, uh, 911 was on it. Um, like after that, we were all hanging out, sitting by the fire, like hanging out and bullshit. And so it's just like, you know, we're all friends. We just so happen to be there to wrestle. But I mean, in the meantime, we're all hanging out and shooting the shit. So I mean, it's it's more of a it's, it's like a family reunion every time we get to do a taping. So I mean, that's the, that's a- now. Do you, do you think? <laughs> You think this will rub off on more locker room settings? Like it'll be more of a norm where you'll go and you'll actually hang out with the other wrestlers, and it becomes like a a bigger deal to actually be feel like you're a part of something in the locker room. 
I think it depends on where you're at too. Cause like, I mean, it depends on what locker room you're in. Cause sometimes when you're bringing people from all over who don't know each other, sometimes you get that little bit of a feel to it. But like with social media now and everything is like, most of the times a lot, like you're going to get close, like you're going to be tight with people when you go to locker rooms. Like cool thing about now compared to like, even when I first started wrestling, even though social media was still big, locker rooms were kind of that like gatekeeper feel, but like, a lot of times people are watching you and like, I feel like the state of wrestling has gotten a lot more cool with like people like each other. You know, you hear old stories and it's like, Oh, that guy. And you know, this down the third, but wrestling now, like I, I guess like me personally, I can't speak for everyone. Um, but I've, I've felt, I felt good energy and vibes through most lockers I've been into. So it's like, I feel like we as people are starting to come into a form where we're all appreciating each other's art instead of trying to shit on it, you know? All right, so here's a. I I agree a hundred percent, yo. For real, here's a question. Um, a question like, to go off uh, of. That. I remember like about like ten years ago working, and I would go into like locker rooms. And you wouldn't know anybody, and and ten years ago, you know, it was only like Facebook and MySpace. You know what I'm saying? So it wasn't like you weren't friendly with everybody. But now right. I walk in and I know everyone. I see everyone's faces. So it's, it's I want to stop you real quick. You said MySpace. What was your, what was your song for your MySpace profile? Uh, keep it real by milk bone. <laughs> nice. I somehow, I was somehow able Yo, to 90s, find... 90s hip hop all fucking day, bro. What's up? I had Shawn Michaels theme as mine. Oh, sexy <laughs> boy. You sexy boy. <laughs> Mine was uh, Astro Zombies by the Misfits, and I also had a shitty mohawk and a devil hawk. So. Oh. All right, what was your guys' like background, like your walls? You know what I mean? Like, what was your wall? Oh no. fuck! I think at one, I think at one point it was the cast of Saved by the Bell. <laughs> 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 and Larry, no, he just died today. That's true. Yeah, I know. I heard. Oh, crazy. <laughs> Depressing. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, way I, to bring down the vibes, you piece of shit. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Holy fuck me, man. Unbelievable. Man passes away and uh, fucking cancer, and here you are bringing it up on a podcast about wrestling. <laughs> the guy just left. Leave him alone already. <laughs> way, to, wait, way to turn heel and turn an angle out of it. What are you going to wrestle oh the God. cast Lord. to save by the bell? <laughs> <laughs> That's off to this guy. <laughs> Uh, you can make like a you can make like a remix to the song about him. Uh, you know what? Never mind. I'm not even gonna. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, it's too much, too far. So yeah, MySpace. That's a dead thing. Let's all buy stock in it. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if my MySpace could make a comeback though, <laughs> bro, I I can I can see pop, uh, what's his name Tom popping out. You know, like a corner, like he did. Like, hey, how you doing? I'm back. <laughs> what's up? Tom has Twitter. I don't think he even messes with he, he gave up on that a long time ago. Didn't he sell that for like two billion dollars or something like that? Probably. Yeah. Tom's on the beach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom is Tom's in his own space. He's got my space. Yeah. yeah. He's in the cloud. Lord. I forgot what we were talking about, dude. I was gonna say, how the hell did we get here? <laughs> um, <laughs> he brought he brought up something and I had to take the fucking conversation far in the left field. Yeah. Oh, you did that. It's gone. Yeah, yeah. I think we were talking about the locker room and how it feels like a family vibe. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's go back to that. Uh, Way to bring it back. <laughs> yeah. No, nah, most uh, I got a lot it. of locker rooms these days are like really comfortable to walk into. It's you don't get like uh Cause I started wrestling in 2008 and um, I would, you know, go places with a couple people like, you know, my boys like Nikki oceans and a couple of whatever, whatever. And um, it would just be like the guys you rode in the car with, you know what I mean? You go to the, you ride in the car, you hang out with your boys that you rode there with, and then you find the dudes you wrestle or, you know, person you got to wrestle. And then you work with them when you, you know, after a little while, but, now you walk into places, you know, not so much with the handshaking and the hugs because of everything going on lately, but um, it's it's so family based. You know, I can hug, give big big hugs. Oh man, it's nice to walk into a locker room where people like you. I think it comes with like even piggybacking off piggybacking off what he's saying is like I think it even comes with like uh not being a piece of shit you know what i mean like i think yeah. we all have a different respect for the business and i think we all have like 
egos are different because e- like having an ego isn't a bad thing it's good to have an ego it just it it depends on where the point of your ego is going and i think the thing with like wrestling nowadays is like obviously people do have egos but like everyone realizes that we're all building each, each other up and i think our like egos now in wrestling are more positive than like a negative ego like oh fuck you you're after my spot now it's just like well we all can shine we're all doing different things there's millions of us in the world we're all seeing it you know what i mean like if there's some kid in brazil who's a professional wrestler and he's doing solid thanks to twitter i know he's doing good you know what i mean i think like what what i was saying about being like you know not being a good person is like like I've collected people, like there's people who I know now in wrestling where you have to sit there and try to remember how you know them. Like I've become friends with like Darius Carter through, I think, uh, Warriors wrestling tapings like five years ago. But like you bump into him, you're like, oh, holy shit. You know, like it's nice seeing you because like I see you over social media. We made a connection. And now that I see you in person, it's nice to like be able to see people again. Cause like it's like watching people grow up like on sitcoms. You know what I mean? Like you're, we're literally watching each other grow up from twitter and instagram and things like iwtv where like so if ron was in a different state wrestling i could still and you know it's under that banner i could still go and watch that or through twitter i could still it's like connections don't get lost anymore you know what i mean we're still all looking forward to seeing each other yeah if you if if you want to connect with someone like you will connect with someone there's no way not to not to do that anymore if you want to be boys and, you know, link up with someone, go to shows and do shit like that, you have 100% full ability to do that now. It's not like I'm only going to call my friend I know here. Like, oh, like, who hit me up on uh, – I forgot. who. It was like a couple dudes hit me up. They needed a ride. I went and picked them up. That was it. You know what I mean? I know them, so I went and picked them up. It's, it's cool to be able to do shit like that because of social media and connecting with everybody. I think we're all moving to be an artist, too. I think, like – wrestling like and not in a negative way at all but i think we're all starting to realize that we're like we are each single artist i always call it like um visual poetry you know what i mean like we're all it's almost like it's more of an art form now so it's like we're all building each other up to be artists compared to like that competitive aspect where even in like a, a fave sense you kind of have to be like you have to keep that atmosphere it's like we're all allowed to be people but as characters we're all allowed to be who we are as people as blown up characters more now because you get to see us on like social media and things like that. So it's like, even gimmicks are different now. You know what I mean? You have less of like, you know, Mike the plumber. Now you have somebody who's a personality. They're letting their character show. And like the state of wrestling right now is real cool. And it's something that really should be appreciated a whole lot. Cause Mike the plumber would be a great gimmick though. <laughs> I'm not, you know what? I might have to take it on. You know what I mean? I, mean, I might be able yeah, to make a career out of it. What would his finishing move be called? The plunger? Oh, a plunger would be good. Like a big right off the top rope. Right off oh, like yeah. the, you know, the pipe cleaner. <laughs> <laughs> what What does that move entail? <laughs> you got to use your pipe. You got to use your pipe. You're a drain snake. You got you to <laughs> have, have a move. You got to have a move called the plumber's crack. Like, it's got to be out crack. there. Yeah. Well, you do the that before crack. you go it's to the be out so there. that way you have the advantage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, you get, like, Mike the plumber versus, you know, Frank the janitor or something like that. Frank the janitor. Well, no, they're a tag team. They work together. They, oh, they they're sweeping the job. competition. Sweeping the competition. You got to have, like, Tom the magician. And Willie the Warlock. <laughs> What's this? They roll dice on finishers, see if they can pass or can make it. That's a plumber right. joke, a D joke. We're coming full circle here, guys. We're making our rounds. Here's the thing. Those are the type of gimmicks that get over, though. Yeah. I mean, Hell yeah. Well, yeah, because people can relate for it. Because your dad's probably a plumber, and, you know, you're – you know, your uncle, your uncle's, you know, Willie the Warlock. He played, he was real big into D and D. You know, so it's like <laughs> I, the thing with like the thing with like gimmicks like that is you can relate to them. Even like Dusty, where he's just like, I'm the son of a plumber. Like you can relate to that because your dad's, you know, blue collar working guy. You're just trying to not have to be a fucking plumber because you know. <laughs> you know <laughs> so it's like, not, there's nothing wrong with being a plumber. I'm just saying, like nobody wants to work a nine to five. Everyone so wants to get on the beach. Uh, I'm the guy that's getting the neck tattoo then because my dad's a plumber. Listen, 
Or am I there's dressing up? There's nothing wrong with neck, Yo, neck tattoos. Neck tattoos, if done correctly, are, are dope. But I think neck not. tattoos need to be surrounded by other tattoos, though. I don't think it could just be a neck tattoo. Are yeah, oh, we talking about uh, Cody's neck tattoo? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that shit it needs is dope. To be- I don't care what you guys say. That shit is tight. I like that it thing. Looks, it looks good, but it would look better if it had, like, a sleeve rolling up to it and, like, it could Oh, like, it. if it, like, went down, like, his shoulder into something? I feel like it's a standalone like- neck tattoo. I feel like it needs company. I think my opinion is always this on it. It's like, I always feel weird when people get tattoos in like super weird places like that without like what does he have? He's like dream on his chest, and then he's like, you know what? Big fat fucking neck tattoos. What I'm like, like, I do like I have my hand tattooed, but like I still have a bunch of my arm done. Then I got my hand tattooed, but like I've seen kids with like throat tattoos and a tattoo under their eye and a tattoo and on their it. knuckles, and that's it. Just yeah, what's like, going on? You just all the visual spots. You just want people to see your tattoos doing them. <laughs> yeah, like you figure that person's gonna be like, okay, he's gonna take his shirt off and he's got he's covered. But nope, that's it. Listen, unless unless you have a sketchy stick and poke tattoo that you got on Halloween in the friend's kitchen while you were making oil, I don't want to hear anything about it. Oh, I got one of those right here. Yeah. <laughs> one's on my ankles. <laughs> I got one of those bad boys. Hell yeah. Dude, my whole my whole left ankle is just stick and poke. That's like the one in the front. Dude, this mother, dude, this motherfucker came straight out of jail and gave me this fucking piece <laughs> of shit, dude. Hundred bucks, bro. <laughs> I'm saying, man. So like, I loved it. I we we're you know we we're smoking, having a good time. I I enjoyed it. And all these kids are getting throat tattoos with numbing lotion. The hell is numbing lotion? Yo, what is that? I didn't even know that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Dude, I got my. I sat with my ribs for five hours, and I was like, I need, I needed rubbing lotion or fucking. Oh something yeah, oil. but if it for if it for like something like sensitive or crazy area like that, or like no, I didn't have the arm, you know, by your arm or something it. like that. Yeah, but like on your fucking your your you know like your forearms and shit. Come on, bro. What's on next tattoos? I think I'm gonna get Snoopy on my butt. On your foot or your butt? On my butt. On, his on butt? your butt. Snoopy and Woodstock just chilling out. Yeah, I don't know, man. Or Bender. <laughs> Futurama. Just his head. Futurama's a good show. I should what get his it? body on one side of my butt <laughs> and on the other side of my butt. On the other cheek, I should get his head like they're separated. And sure enough, <laughs> PPY on the other ass cheek. Yeah, you know, by my shiny metal ass. You never know. <laughs> so your gimmick would have to entail you wrestling in a thong so everyone can see it. Listen, man, don't put it past me. We've all done questionable things for twenty dollars in a handshake. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Is that like not is that not the best way to describe like if someone were to ask you what you just describe what you do in a couple words? You, yeah, I it, it almost sounds like a fucking Craigslist ad. <laughs> Give me twenty bucks, I'll come over in spandex and grapple around for a little bit in front of a live audience. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, I mean, it's like everyone's like, "Oh, they're glorified action heroes." We're like, we're like declassified strippers. We're not even. You can't even put us in that class. They make more money than we. Jesus. Yeah, I man. I, I I always heard like uh that um wrestlers are are jacked up drama students. You know what I mean? <laughs> jacked up fucking guys, you know, do plays and operas and shit like that in high school. Like that's all it is. That's this that's it. <laughs> it's funny because you know what it is? It it kind of is like that, but it's like you always get these like big tough dudes, and like they're tough, don't get me wrong. I'm not putting them past it, but like then you realize what we do, and it's like Fucking come on! <laughs> Some of us are half ass naked in boots, thigh high boots. Yeah, naked. Dude, it's it's really hard to act tough when you're slathered in baby oil wearing a fucking diaper. Like, there's really like come on, we're like a bunch of aggressive go go dancers. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and then they then then they put us in a cage. Can you believe this shit? We're a bunch of caged go go dancers, just real oiled up and muscular. Oh man. <laughs> Slapping each other. 
Yeah, slap each other around. You slap my chest, I'll slap yo. your chest, Daddy. <laughs> that's I mean that's perfect because me and Trajan are like uh like the like the Chippendales, you know what I'm saying? We're Chippendales, bro. Like the rest of the Rangers, it's like it's like the SNL skit, but we're both Chris Farley. So. Yeah, but we're both Chris Farley. <laughs> we need a Swayze somewhere to keep. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude, you can't ask me how we got here. I don't remember. I don't. I I don't care, honestly. <laughs> this is what happens when you have a list of questions. You're just like, <laughs> who's I mean, winning? <laughs> I don't know if there was a question that spurred this. I just think this happened. This was organic. I was just trying to everyone's next tattoo was. <laughs> yeah, we got we went from Snoopy tattoo to Chippendale dancer. Yeah, I mean that's that's a normal trajectory though. That makes complete sense. When you of think course. of Snoopy, you think of Chippendale dancers. That's all I'm saying. Listen, if I can wear less clothes and make more money, I. <laughs> <laughs> hey, grab me a loincloth and flip flops. Shit, I'll come out. Yo, we should come out in a bow tie, bro. Just a bow tie. That's it. Just bow tie. <laughs> Just a bow tie. <laughs> we will get kicked off of every network, and we will not. We won't be wrestling, but we'll have a show in Atlantic City. No, no, somewhere. we'll have pants on. No, we're just a bow tie and some pants. That's what I'm saying. A bow tie and pants. Oh, oh. oh okay. All right. Well, that's gonna take down our bargain a little bit. We're gonna lose money if we're putting pants on. No, if we if we come in bow tie and pants, I want a fatter envelope. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, man. You you getting you're getting all the goods here. I want more money. <laughs> <laughs> if more money means all my clothes could fit in an envelope and I'll fit more money, and I'll have more money than I don't mind at all. <laughs> just, I just want to get I want to get my envelope. How uh you know how strippers get their their money. On my way to the entrance ramp. Picking, you're picking it up off the floor. I in hope the fucking, I don't want you know, in just like... Stuff some dollar bills on me, baby. Cash! <laughs> well, <laughs> let's go. Stuff, the, stuff them bad boys in my Chippendale pants. I hope, the, uh, I hope the next promoter you guys are working for is listening. Yeah. It's probably Chris and we're fired. <laughs> <laughs> or you got that big raise you were hoping for. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna Twitter message right now saying don't ever associate Camp Leap Post again. I gotta get rid of my T-shirt that I got. <laughs> you can, you can. WTV is calling me. He's like, shut the Zoom down now. <laughs> <laughs> they just they just know bad things have happened. This I is- never said I was family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> That's all people right. just that assume is- that because the gimmick. <laughs> Yeah, that I, don't, just, I, don't, I don't call me daddy because I have kids. That's how that works. <laughs> I think that means you guys are good at your job, though, if you can go from this conversation to go into a family-friendly event, though. Yeah, it, it's a whole lot of anxiety and you looking in the mirror and saying, don't say the F word. Don't say the F word. Dude. Don't say the I've F been, word. I've been I, – you know how many fucking bookings I've lost because I've cursed at a family show, bro? Like eight. Here's the funny thing about a family show right here is you're not allowed to curse i cannot say the f word not allowed to curse i'm not allowed to be too vulgar in any way but if i take a i had these kids heckling me i took a big old sip of water and just spit water all pre-covid time spit water all over these kids of soaking wet it was like uh like sea world and that's fine the moms were like oh my god we love that but if i would have walked out there and been like oh fucking hey this is a good time boom done get out Put water have, on those kids all you want. <laughs> I had, I, you know, I, I got a funny story. I was doing a show, and they're like, "No cursing." I was like, "All right, cool." And it's during my fucking fire up. I'm getting re- like, I'm, oh, I'm coming back, right? And I point to this dude and his kid, and I go, "Check this shit out." And I go do some flippy corkscrew thing, right? I come back. And it's the fucking, it's the, like, the county fair's main promoter guy and his son. And I cursed right at him. And I got fucking booed. They're like, you can't come back here ever again. I was like, come on, bro. Dude, I'm wrestling. We're wrestling in Tennessee. It's me and uh, Jamie Senegal. And, like, Jamie's got makeup on and fishnets and super short shorts. And where we come from, like, our whole gimmick was kind of like, um, What's that movie? Not Three from Hell, but like the um, was Devil's Rejects or whatever. Devil's so, Rider? 
Oh. Yeah, we're called like the punk rock death squad at the time. So it's like super tough. And he walks up to me. He's like, listen, I got a problem with you with, the, with, with your gimmick. I'm like, oh, what's up, man? He's like, yeah. So like, I just want to ask some questions. So you guys are from Boner City, right? And I'm just like, oh, God. But no, we're going to change that tonight. Like, All right, cool. Uh, you can't be uh, the daddy here. And I'm just like, what do you mean? Like, I can't be the chubby daddy? Like, yeah, we got kids and it's real, like, real grotesque and like sexual. We just can't have it on our show. I look over and Jamie's like smearing his makeup to make it look like he just went through some things. And I'm just like, hey, you guys serious right now? I can't be the chubby daddy, but like everyone else here is just allowed to do whatever filthy gimmick they want. Fucking Sal. That's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, sometimes there's like the little bit of favoritism when shit like that happens, but there's nothing well, you can do man, about it. It sucks. She's gorgeous. So I mean, I don't, I don't put it past James Sunnyvale at all. He's like, she's allowed to do whatever she wants. But for what? I don't even. I didn't hear the name. Band in, ba- band in the South. That's that's gonna be the, that's gonna be my new thing. I'm gonna try to. I'm not working the Southern territories. I'm gonna try to get bound banned in every Southern state. Of wrestling. Are there a lot know. of family shows down there? I think I think the South. I think the South likes to have. A, you know, like oh, we're we're morally correct. You know what I mean? But like, come on. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know about Come that. <laughs> Come Those big houses weren't just beautiful Victorian homes. You know, we got full <laughs> meaning. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> there it is. I, I literally I'm getting I'm getting the text message now from Georgia and Tennessee that I am now not allowed there anymore. So, <laughs> no more vacations in the South. I gotta work hard to get Florida to really not want me there anymore, but I mean, yeah, I'm going to work on Louisiana next. <laughs> Louisiana won't be hard, but Florida, it's going to take a really yeah. special type of scumbag move for that. Yeah. Pennsylvania man gets born or banned from Florida. <laughs> it's going to be the best headline. <laughs> Depends on what one part of PA. If it's like by Pittsburgh, then yeah, I can see that. Can you imagine I'm not letting you Popeyes anymore? Like they just have a picture – <laughs> and Popeye's and Chick Fil A, I walk in and they're like, "Nope, you're not allowed to have this delicious Southern chicken." <laughs> <laughs> the Colonel's more your people. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Listen, I'll, I'll accept not eating the Colonel, but I can't can't not have Popeyes. I've I'll never had Popeyes. Popeyes. <sighs> it's a damn shame. Popeyes is delicious. Popeyes black and chicken. I'm hoping to get picked up by Popeyes. I'm going to keep dropping their name until they send me a text <laughs> message. <laughs> we know you're banned down south, but hey, listen, we like your gimmick. We're going to pick you up. We're close enough to Florida. We can get away with this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I do want to at least kind of bring wrestling back into it from where we originally were. <laughs> Well, that wherever like, that was. Minutes ago, dude. It's too late now. We're done with <laughs> <Heavy wrestling>. editing. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, going forward, you are you guys as either as a team or individually, anyway. Um, what are your goals past uh, Camp Leap Truck? I did not, not much right now. <laughs> <laughs> trying, to, trying to get through COVID, really. I, I think, um, I mean, honestly, I, I, I just like I like performing, like, that's one thing that kind of bums me out. I think most of us bums us out, like. I really do love tapings, but I'm, I like hearing a crowd. I think that's, um, I think that's a K-I-N-K for all of us, where it's just like, that's something that we it really enjoys. Um, that's the cool thing is like getting to go to a locker room where it's loving and it's brotherly and then going out and getting to hear a crowd like chant your name. I mean, hearing 400 people chant your name and hearing four people chant your name is still, it's a good feeling. So I, I, obviously would love to be everywhere and with Ron go everywhere and the thing with that, but mainly I just, I like performing. So it's just like, for me, whether it's a bingo hall or it's, it's the big one. Like I still, to me, I do this because I enjoy, I enjoy doing this. I, it's, there's no deep driven method to, and I guess that could get me hate because people are like, Oh, you don't want to be, I mean, whether I'm the biggest thing or not in someone's heart, you could be the biggest thing in the whole entire world. I wrestled in front of, 10 people and those people love you more than you know a thousand so it's like 
I just I enjoy performing. Anytime I get to do that, whether it is a taping or a live crowd, I'm still going to enjoy what I do. So that's hopefully I get to do this for a very long time, healthy, and you know, getting to live this story that I'm living right now. Uh, goals for me, um, I never really got into professional wrestling to be like a fucking world champion or whatever like that. I just wanted to learn how to wrestle. I, that was always the main goal for me. I just wanted to do what they were doing on TV. And I, um, you know, I, I from early on, I was like, ah, I'm not going to be, you know, the next world heavyweight champion, but at least I get to learn a craft and, and do something that I enjoy. Um, I mean, like, like having goals in professional wrestling are, they're far and far and few. There's only certain ones you want to do and accomplish. But, you know, I always just want to be in the business of professional wrestling. I don't, I don't care if it was just to be a wrestler. I don't care if it's to be a referee. I don't care if I got to pull the fucking cords for the camera crew. I just always wanted to be part of that business. And I'm glad I get to, I've gotten to participate in it for like 12, 13 years. It's going to be soon. And I absolutely love everything about it. It was uh, it, like performing and wrestling is, is just a bonus on top of being surrounded by something that you watch growing up and that you love so much. That was always my thing. So just to be involved is my own personal goal. And I've already hit that a thousand times over. So it's, Everything else for me is just a bonus for a professional. Like getting to do like a podcast like this or working for Camp Leapfrog or being on IWTV is amazing to me. That's that's the top of the top for me right now. So I'm, I'm cool with it. I, I'm I'm happy with what I've done over a very long, long career. And I'm cool with doing more. But whatever comes thrown my way, I'm just going to do it with my fucking chin up and be and be happy about it that's all i can ask for yeah makes sense uh well i think uh we're gonna uh, stop right there um and uh thank you guys so much for uh taking the time talking with us bullshitting uh took a lot of turns i did not see coming <laughs> you brought it back and ended it on a sentimental note though good for you yes yeah way to uh, perfectly yeah, well, I mean, you know, that's I'm just speaking from the heart. You know what I mean? This is I mean, that's, I that's what we appreciate. Stuff like and that. People, I think people can relate to that. I think that's what people grow to appreciate is when you're real. Uh, I'm, I'm, that's I'm, what it comes down to. <laughs> I, 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 sometimes I'm a little too real. I'm a, I'm a little – I get a little too comfortable from where I'm at, and it may come off as wrong, but, you know, it's all out of love. And uh, I love and you everybody. you're from Jersey, and they understand so, Huh? I said, you tell them you're from Jersey and they understand completely. Yeah, yeah. They're just like, wow, this guy is very strong, but he's got a heart of gold. Heart of gold. <laughs> I'm banned from the South. You guys are banned from Jersey now. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm calling the mayor or something. <laughs> no, no. Not the governor, just the mayor of some town. The mayor of yeah, New Jersey, just, not the governor. I, just, just one mayor of this single county is the only one I know. So sorry, buddy. <laughs> Don't come by exit 79 there. anytime soon. I'll tell you that right fucking now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, shit. Uh, thank you again for being on the show. Really appreciate it. Um, and uh, hopefully we will be seeing you soon on uh, Camp Leapfrog. Dude, I didn't. Oh, don't we got? We should plug that. We should plug that next one coming up, right? Plug it. Go right ahead. Plug, plug it. Away. All right. I believe it's called Camp Love Frog. Ooh, a little sexy, spicy hearts everywhere, and uh, and <laughs> it's <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, it comes out Valentine's Day, eight p.m. on IWTV. Yo, Ron, where can we find you at? Yo, you can find me on Twitter. At, I use my shoot name because, you know, whatever. Who gives a fuck? Um, Twitter, at Kevin Hernandez underscore. Find me on Instagram, at Kevin Hernandez for life. The number four, life. <laughs> and Trey, how about you? 
sir. You can find me on Twitter at Daddy of the G L X Y. You can also find me on Instagram at Daddy Delix. And if you're feeling dangerous, you could also probably find me on Facebook by my shoot slash work name Trajan Horn. And uh, on behalf of the Big Bad Booty Daddies, me and Ron Voyage, much love to everyone out there. Good luck to all the professional wrestlers and the Brotherly Love Podcast. Thank you guys for having us. Fuck yeah, gang shit, gang gang, let's go. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks guys, have a good night. Later gentlemen.